Welcome back to my video series where I take you through Betaflight 4.3 Configurator and show you every single tab, every single option and describe what it does so you know everything there is to know about Betaflight. Okay, well maybe not quite everything. But today we're going to be continuing our discussion of the PID tuning tab and looking at the rate profile settings tab. If that's what you're here for, fantastic, stick around. But if you're looking for a generic, you know, start to finish, almost a classroom tutorial about Betaflight Configurator or Betaflight in general, there's a link in the video description to this playlist with all the videos in it. And you could just start at number one and like work your way through onto the rate profile tab. And the first thing we got to do is like conceptualize what rates are. And we're going to do that with this controller here and this rates preview 3D model here on screen. And when I move the controller, the rates preview 3D model shows a simulation of what the flight controller will try to make the real quadcopter do. So I'm gonna set my rates up like this and I don't want you to pay too much attention to exactly how I've set it up because you would never really do this in real life. This is just for demonstration purposes. But I've set my rates up so I have a perfectly linear rate curve We'll talk about that more in a second. And when the stick is centered, the quadcopter doesn't move at all. You can see it's not rotating at all. Zero degrees per second at the center. And when I deflect to the stick to full deflection, we're gonna get a rotational rate in this case of 360 degrees per second. And I picked that because 360 degrees per second is one rotation per second. It's very sort of easy to conceptualize. Now let's go back to that linear rate curve. What does that mean? It means when the stick is fully deflected, we're rotating at 360 degrees per second. When the stick is 50% deflected, we're rotating at half of 360 degrees per second. And there is a perfectly linear relationship the percentage of deflection is the percentage of rotation from zero to 360. Now here's why linear rates are not preferred by most pilots. Because when I'm flying the quadcopter, I, a lot of the time I want to make very small corrections. I wanna make very precise, slow movements, right? And when you have linear rates, those very precise slow movements, maybe in the range of 20 or 30 degrees per second, they require extremely small deflections of the stick. And you just lack precision. Most people lack precision when they're making these very, very small stick movements. Um, so how do you solve that problem? You solve that problem with a concept called Expo. And if we add Expo, what we'll see is that the curve will become nonlinear. What will happen, uh, we've added Expo on the roll axis, so we'll play with that. We see that on the pitch axis, where it's linear, if I want to get like 30 degrees per second rotation, a nice, slow, smooth, cinematic turn, right? If I want to get 30 degrees rotation, I need to deflect the stick only about, uh, looks like about 10%, and I don't have a lot of precision there. But to get 30 degrees per second on the roll axis, because I've added Expo, I can deflect the stick, like it looks like, like 30%. So I've given myself a lot more precision, a lot more sensitivity on the roll axis by adding Expo. And I can make larger movements close to the center stick in maybe the first 30 or 40% of the stick travel I can make those smooth cinematic movements, um, but then what happens when I deflect the stick all the way? When I deflect the stick all the way, I still end up at that max roll rate of 360 degrees per second. So where's the trade-off there? At center stick, I'm at zero. At max deflection, I'm at, at 360 degrees per second. And I've basically traded sensitivity and precision here close to center and then we've got this rapid sort of, let me just make it really extreme. If I just go up to a ton of Expo, we've got tons of sensitivity. Look how far I have to deflect the stick. I've deflected the stick like 30% and I'm only going nine degrees per second. How many degrees per second do you want? One degree per second? Yup. Two degrees per second? Look how much precision I've got here close to the set. It's too much. It's too much precision. You don't need that much precision. 
And the more expo you've got, then suddenly, as I begin to get past about 50% deflection, whoosh, suddenly I have no precision and no control here in this steep part of the curve. So what expo is doing, or what a nonlinear rate curve is doing, is trading precision and sensitivity at one part of the curve for precision and sensitivity at another part of the curve. You can't get something for nothing. If you want more precision everywhere, you need to reduce the max rate. If we bring this max rate down to something like 200 degrees per second, now we have more precision everywhere, but we have less max rate. That's, a, that's the trade-off. If we wanna use Expo, we can trade precision in the center. We can get more precision in the center in exchange for less precision here in the steep part of the curve but that is a trade-off that many pilots are willing to make. And the reason is this. When you're making small, precise movements, you need precision. But when you do a snap roll, do you care if your quadcopter is rotating at 1,300 degrees per second or 1,250? Whoosh, you just snap roll. You don't need all that precision here at the full stick deflection. You need the precision near the center. And that's a trade-off that especially freestyle pilots are more than willing to make. So how do you set your rates? How do you choose what rates you want? One way you can do it is to go to the presets tab. Let's just make sure we've got the Betaflight presets loaded and go to the rates section. And here are some people's rates. And this is not a bad idea because not all rate profiles are like good. There are some rates that are just kind of bad and difficult to work with. They have too much expo or too little expo and trying something that other people, somebody else used, you're not necessarily gonna like everybody's rates, but you could just try them out and see what you think. But if you wanna come up with your own rates, let's go back to the rate profile tab. And what I wanna do is I wanna choose actual rates. And this is Betaflight's default, and I think it is the smartest and most intuitive way for most people to set up their rates. We will talk about the other ones because we're going to talk about everything, but here I want to start with the actual rates because that's what I think most people should be using. And in actual rates, there are three parameters, the center sensitivity, the max rate, and the expo. And if we look at these curves, we can kind of understand what they're doing. Let's start by talking about max rate because it's the simplest to understand. Max rate controls how fast the quad Copter will spin when you do a full deflection of the stick. And that's going to be the fastest you'll be able to rotate the quad. If you're a freestyle pilot, what you're going to want to do is set that max rate based on the fastest snap roll that you intend to do. So uh, like uh, the fastest snap roll that I think I've ever seen pilots use effectively is around 1100 to maybe as fast as 1300 degrees per second. Much faster than that and it's so fast that you really can't be precise. And if you disagree, do this exercise. Set your max rate to whatever you think you're gonna use. And I'm gonna set it to 1300, which I know is too fast for me. And then try to do a, a 360 roll. So here I'm gonna just rotate the quad so it is straight up and down. And I'm gonna do a 360 roll, ready? Oh, see I overshot? Okay, let's try again. Nope, overshot. Okay, let's try again. Nope. If you can't with reasonable consistency, do a 360 roll or a 180 roll. And I'm going, you gotta go to full stick, right? If you're not going to full stick, that's you're, you're, why, why would you have the max rate that high? If you can't do a reasonably consistent full stick roll, oh, nope, that wasn't 360. Oh, that was close, I'm getting closer. Then there's no point in you having your max rate that high. I fly with a max rate of 900 which is plenty for freestyle. Uh, it's not quite as snappy as a max rate of about 1100. And uh, somebody like Alex Vanover has a max rate around 700 for free freestyle. I, I don't think a lot of freestyle pilots go below about 700 uh, because freestyle pilots wanna have some snap ability and below about 700, you just don't get a lot of snappiness in your rolls, but obviously your personal style will dictate. So we're gonna start by setting the max rate. And frankly, I think most people are gonna set the max rate the same on pitch and roll because a flip versus a snap roll, you're gonna have about the same timing. On yaw, you often will have a different max rate because you're seldom gonna do like a 360 yaw spin at full deflection. Most people don't go full deflection on yaw. And if you do, 
you're probably not going to be able to achieve the same rate because the yaw axis has less authority. But that's up to you. You can set that however you think you're going to need it to be. Once you set the max rate, the next thing to do is set the center sensitivity. And the way the sensor center sensitivity works is the higher this number, the closer you get to a linear curve. Eventually, if you keep raising the number higher than the max rate, you'll start pushing the max rate up. So don't do that. Sensor sensitivity should always be lower than max rate. And the lower this number, the more expo you'll get and the more softness and sensitivity and precision you'll get in the center. So frankly, you're probably going to need to fly the quad to really feel these out. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to set, set the sens center sensitivity somewhere and go fly and feel how much precision you feel like you have in the center when you're doing sort of normal flying around movements as opposed to whoop, snap rolls and stuff, okay? And if you feel like you're having to make very tiny, tiny stick movements where your fingers, do you need more, you can't really be precise, then you can go ahead and lower the sensitivity number down a little bit to get more center sensitivity. Eventually, if you lower that number too much, you'll end up in this situation where you have an extremely soft center and then you'll have an abrupt shift. You see how as I deflect the stick, I'm making small little moves and then I deflect the stick and whoa, suddenly I'm going way too fast, right? You'll lose precision. So you'll feel that out You raise and lower that number and you'll feel that curve as you go, as you move the stick. And then finally, we've got the expo parameter and expo and center sensitivity basically do the same thing, but they in a slightly different shape to the curve. So what I'm gonna do is for the pitch axis, I'm gonna add some expo and I want you to see how the line differs. You see that by adding expo to the pitch axis, I can get a much softer and more precise center stick than I ever could by changing the center sensitivity on roll. Even when I lower the sensor sensitivity on roll all the way down, it just doesn't, affect pretty much anything past about one third deflection. So once you've got your center sensitivity about dialed in, you can also play with raising expo if you want to further soften the center and you can sort of tweak and adjust the shape of that curve. At the end of the day, it's completely up to you and whether you can accomplish what you need to accomplish when you're flying the quad. Now, the reason that I think actual rates is where most people should be and the reason that they are the beta flight default is that they kind of intuitively make sense, at least uh, as much as anything does. The max rate is full stick deflection. The center sensitivity is the sort of rates for the center, maybe one third of stick travel. And then Expo sort of softens that out by adding Expo. And that's how you kind of think about it. If we go from actual rates to beta flight rates, things are sort of the same. But the main thing that makes beta flight rates more confusing is that each of these parameters, the RC rate and the rate parameter, they affect the whole curve. Whereas when we're dealing with actual rates, the center sensitivity doesn't change the end point at all, right? As I change center sensitivity, as long as I keep center sensitivity below max rate, the max rate stays the same. So I am only affecting the center of the curve. When I change expo, I am only affecting the center of the curve. I'm not changing the end point. And then when I change max rate, I am mostly affecting the outer 70% of the curve while leaving the center basically the same. So with actual rates, you can adjust your full stick rate and you can adjust your center more or less independently. Whereas with beta flight rates, which was the default up till beta flight 4.3, these two parameters, the RC rate affects the entire curve. The curve basically keeps the same shape, but is scaled up or down. So as soon as I start messing with RC rate, my whole curve is thrown off. So if I said, I kind of like this curve, but I just want to change the center a little bit, what I'd have to do is kind of raise this or lower this, and then I have to come back and raise the rate parameter and the rate parameter mostly changes the outer, say 50% of the curve while leaving the center alone. So now I'm gonna bring this back up and it's just a lot of tweaking to make the changes you wanna make. A simple way to think about this is that RC rate changes the entire curve, rate changes mostly the outer 50% of the curve and expo changes the shape of the curve softening or making the center more linear. 
Basically, the only reason I think someone would use beta flight rates today is if you have been flying beta flight rates for the last however long and you just have a set of rates that you know you like. There's nothing wrong with them. But if you're starting from scratch and you're trying to find your own rates that you love, definitely do it with actual rates. It will be much easier and more intuitive to make the changes you want to make to uh, get the rates that you want to get. Now, race flight rates and kiss rates, the only reason these exist is if you have previously flown a kiss or a race flight flight controller and you have a set of rates that you know you like. Rates are highly personal and if you've been flying the same rates for years, your muscle memory is very tuned to them. And so getting those rates into beta flight you would just select that and you would put your numbers in and you'd be ready to go. If you haven't been flying race flight or kiss and you don't have a set of rates that you love, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't use those. That's the only purpose for those. And then finally we come to quick rates and quick rates is similar to actual rates in that it's got RC rate, max rate and expo and max rate and expo work the same, but RC rate works similar to the beta flight rates. Basically, the only reason quick rates exists is if you have beta flight rates that you're trying to translate over to actual rates, the ability to reuse your max rate may help. But frankly, I think most people these days who are starting from scratch, they would be better off using actual rates, which is the beta flight default. Next, let's go over to these parameters and we'll talk about TPA and TPA breakpoint. TPA stands for throttle PID attenuation. And the idea is that as the throttle goes up and the motors spin faster, the quadcopter makes more thrust. And as the quadcopter makes more thrust, you actually need to reduce the PIDs, the strength of the PIDs, because the PIDs are proportional to the weight and thrust of the quad. So if you have PIDs that are perfect at medium or low throttle, the PIDs will actually be too high at high throttle. Throttle PID attenuation, the way it works is that when the throttle goes over the TPA breakpoint, and so 1350 is, well, 1500 would be center throttle, 1350, we'd need to look in the receiver tab to see the throttle position. When the throttle goes over 1350, which is the breakpoint, the PID controller will begin reducing the PIDs. And the way it works is that at full throttle, PIDs will be reduced to 65% of their full value. At 1350, they'll be at 100% of their value, and then there's a linear reduction in the PIDs between the breakpoint and full throttle. This is not something that you probably will need to change unless you're doing some uh, real PID tuning. Uh, this value is usually pretty correct uh, for most setups, but if you find that you've got a situation where the quadcopter has like bad oscillations at full throttle, but is perfectly tuned at mid throttle, you would maybe need to raise the TPA percent or reduce the TPA breakpoint. The reason I say most people won't need to change this is it's fairly aggressive from the beginning. And if anything, it might be a little too high for some situations, but the thing is, at full throttle, you're probably not staying at full throttle long and you're probably not doing like snap moves at full throttle. You're probably doing a punch out. And so as long as the motors are reasonably smooth and the quad stays reasonably flat, the, the pids don't, probably don't need to be super, super precise at full throttle. At least that's my thinking. Um, that is TPA and TPA breakpoint. Throttle limit. Uh, with throttle limit, I can choose either scale or clip and then I'm gonna choose a percent. So if we set this to scale and we choose 75%, the input of the throttle will be reduced. When the throttle is at 100%, the, PID, uh, the flight controller will treat it as if it was at 75%. Now, you may be thinking that this is awfully similar to the motor output limit that we saw here in the PID tuning tab, and in fact, it is. The difference between them is that the motor output limit limits the output of the flight controllers to the motors, whereas the throttle limit limits the input of the throttle to the flight controllers. So with the throttle limit, if I go to full throttle, the PID controller can still ask the motors to go to full throttle if it needs to do that to make them sort of make the quad move in a way it wants it to move. But I will only be able to command 75% throttle or whatever I set it to, uh, here. So I'll get a reduction in top end speed, but I'll still get snappy rolls and stuff. The reason you would use a motor output limit is that if you're using, let's say you're using 2400 kV motors with a 6S battery, that is way too high a voltage for those motors. We don't want the flight controller to command those motors to ever go to full throttle. On the other hand, if you've got something like a uh, tiny whoop and 
you've got the right KV motors and everything. There's no reason to reduce the amount of power that the flight controller demands from the motors. You just want to scale it down a little so it's easier for you to fly. In that case, you would use a throttle limit. Now that throttle limit can be scale or clip. The way that scale works is that 100% of the throttle is scaled down to whatever this value is. The way that clip works is that the throttle is left alone, but when you exceed this value, it simply doesn't go any higher. And the reason you might use clip is if you want to keep your hover point the same and keep your throttle curve the same, you just wanna chop off the top end of the throttle so you can't go to full throttle and go bonkers to the moon. Some racers would use clip to take off the top 10% of their throttle just so that it wouldn't crush their battery, but they wanted to leave their throttle curve exactly the same so their muscle memory didn't change. Scale is what most people would use if you, if you don't really care so much about muscle memory and your exact throttle curve staying the same. Next, we come to throttle mid and throttle expo. And this is one of the most commonly misunderstood features of beta flight. What throttle expo does is it adds expo to your throttle. So if you've got a quadcopter and let's say it hovers right at 50% on the throttle, but the problem is that, especially if you're a beginner, like it's really hard for you to hover. You have to make really tiny throttle movements and you have a really hard time getting it to hover. What you can do is you can add throttle expo and by doing so, you will add a soft, sensitive, precise section of the throttle curve right there around the hover point. Oh, cool, that sounds like a good thing. It can be, but be careful. Because if we raise the throttle expo to a really high value, we can see that just like with the, uh, with the regular rates, we lose precision elsewhere in the curve. So we can easily dial in like exactly 51% throttle, 52% throttle. Look how big of a stick movement I'm making. And I'm only changing the throttle percent by 1%. But then as soon as I get out of this soft center location, suddenly 46, 45, 44, 30, 30, 30, 30. Yeah, so you'll gain precision near this throttle point, near this midpoint, but you'll lose precision elsewhere and you don't wanna go too crazy. There's probably not much downside in giving yourself maybe 30 or 40% throttle expo, but uh, going too far will make it hard to control the throttle anywhere except that hover point. Now, what does throttle mid do? Again, I'm gonna take this way up so you can really see the effect. By changing throttle mid, it changes where that soft spot in the throttle is. So you're gonna to wanna to set throttle mid to wherever you want the most precision in the throttle curve. Well, how do you know where that is? The way, what you should do is you should set your expo to zero and you should go fly. And a simple thing to do is to go into the OSD tab and put the throttle percent in the OSD so you can see your throttle percent while you're flying. And if you want precision for hover, then hover the quad. And if you want precision for cruise, then put the quad into a forward cruise and look at the throttle position and look at what throttle position you're at. So let's say that when you're in a smooth forward cruise, you're at, let's say, 40% on the throttle. So you're going to set your throttle mid to 0.4 or 40%, and then you're going to dial in a little bit of expo, maybe 20 or 30% expo, maybe as much as 40%, probably not much more than that, though, in my humble opinion. And that's going to give you just a little more precision around that expo point. But there's a reason that I don't use throttle expo. And the reason is that that midpoint is heavily dependent on the weight of the quadcopter. If you take off your GoPro or if you add a heavier battery, this position where you've added this additional sensitivity, now it actually should be up here, but it's not. This is actually the point where you've lost sensitivity. So if you don't go crazy with the Expo, it's not going to have too much of an effect, but uh, there are people who dial in a huge amount of Expo, and at that point, your mid has to be exactly right, and I think it, do it doesn't result in good habits. What I would say is, if you need more sensitivity and you're having trouble hovering, you should use the throttle limit and simply reduce the reduce the power of the quadcopter a little bit. And that means you'll get a little bit, it'll be a little easier for you to hover. And then as you get become a better pilot, you can put that back on. But if you absolutely need help hovering the quad and you don't wanna reduce your top end power for any reason, 
then you should use Throttle Mid and Throttle Expo as I described. There's another technique that people use with Throttle Mid and Throttle Expo, and to demonstrate this, I'm gonna put in about 50% Expo, which is higher than I would usually use, but just to make the point, and we're gonna put Throttle Mid all the way down at the bottom. And what that basically does is, it basically lowers the hover point of the quad so that you take off quicker. You know, sometimes it feels like you raise the throttle and nothing happens. And sometimes it feels like you're practically at half throttle before you even can get the quad off the ground. And then you're just like wasting half your throttle resolution. By lowering throttle mid all the way to zero and then adding in some throttle expo, the quad will take off closer to zero throttle and you'll have more throttle position to work with. However, it will be non-linear and so it may be a little bit harder to predict. And that, my friends, is the rate profile tab. You know, rates are highly personal and having the wrong rates for your ability, your brain and your muscles can actually make you a much worse pilot. So I hope that this has encouraged you to maybe try some different rate presets or maybe figure out the best rates for you and now you know how to do it. Next up, we are gonna talk about the filter settings tab. When that video comes out, there'll be a card on screen pointing you to it. In the meantime, there's a video uh, a card for the whole rest of this playlist. If you haven't seen it, uh, there's a lot of good information there. Thank you for watching and I will see you there.